Glass started out live as a 150 page script, which is M. Night Shyamalan's longest screenplay to date, and he did film that whole script, which gave him a first cut of 3 hours and 20 minutes. Over an hour of footage from that early cut was deleted as the movie was edited down to around 2 hours and 10 minutes. Given that Shyamalan financed much of the 20 million budget of Glass himself, it's understandable that he wishes he'd been a bit harsher during the writing process and pared down the script before shooting began. Still, that means we've got some interesting deleted scenes to talk about. Yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm going to reveal and explain seven intriguing scenes that were deleted from Glass, including an alternate ending. Spoilers ahead if you haven't seen the film yet. One of the most striking deleted scenes from Glass takes place in the corridors of the psychiatric hospital. In the cutscene, we see several of the hospital's other patients approaching the beast and, as they do so, he seems to be laying hands on them, as if they're having an almost religious experience. The beast believes that only those who've suffered are pure, so it's natural that he would see the other patients at the psychiatric hospital as his followers. Shyamalan has said he chose a mustard colour for the beast's clothing, because it's associated with religious ceremonies and he regards the beast as an evangelist, a preacher who wants to help save the broken. And remember that a number of Kevin's personalities, including Patricia and Dennis, talk about the beast in religious terms, for example referencing his prey as sacred food. Dr. Staple even refers to Patricia as a kind of high priestess. And when doubt about the beast finally creeps in, Patricia says that her horde is losing faith. It would seem logical, therefore, if the full deleted scene also showed us the beast preaching and converting the patients to his cause. In the final film, we see David Dunn, aka The Overseer, demonstrate his superpowers just once before the movie moves on to him tracking down and battling the beast. That scene in the movie takes place in the home of two men who randomly attacked a passerby on the street, then uploaded a video of the attack to the internet. However, another scene of David's crime-fighting exploits in the city was deleted from the movie. In this trailer footage that didn't make it into the final film, you can see the overseer slamming someone up against what looks like it could be a subway wall. If you look carefully at the clip, you can also see someone lying on the floor with the contents of their handbag or purse spilled out on the ground beside them, all of which points to the person on the floor having been assaulted or mugged by the guy being thrown against the wall by the overseer. This scene looks like it's part of a longer introduction to Dunn's vigilante activities, and so I expect it was cut to get to the main action of Dunn vs the Beast more quickly and also trim down the movie's runtime. Shyamalan made good use in Glass of several deleted scenes from Unbreakable, including one with young Elijah at a fair, and another with Joseph telling David that he knows his secret identity. But those weren't the only deleted scenes from the nearly 20-year-old film that the director was going to include in the final part of his trilogy. Originally, a deleted Unbreakable scene where David speaks to a priest was also going to feature in Glass. In the scene which takes place in a church, David tells a priest that he feels the fact that he was the sole survivor of the train wreck means something important. However, the priest, who also lost family in the crash, tells David in no uncertain terms that his survival is no hand of God miracle moment. You were chosen? I don't think so. Shyamalan has said he decided to cut this powerful scene from Glass at the last moment, and I think that the scene probably appeared just after the group therapy session when we see David Dunn sitting alone in his room looking despondent. It would have fit perfectly there, as David is clearly shaken by Dr. Staple's words about how all his supposed superpowers are just a matter of intuition and tricks, so it makes sense that he might think back in that moment to someone else from his past, the priest, who likewise doubted that he was special. It was luck. What do you mean? Random. Without meaning. Actor James McAvoy also had an extended scene with the cheerleaders at the beginning of the movie. The final film starts with Dennis and Patricia off screen, discussing people's lack of belief in the Beast. Then we see Patricia introduce herself to the four abducted girls. Now, who'd like a PB and J sandwich? <laughs> However, according to Shyamalan in the original script, the opening sequence with Patricia was much longer. The director thought he needed to explain how Kevin had multiple personalities, and so the cheerleaders were going to go through a similar set of scenes as Casey and the two girls did when they were first abducted in Split. In the end, though, Shyamalan realised he was just repeating things people had already seen in that film, and that he didn't need the extra scenes in Glass to properly reintroduce the audience to Kevin Wendell Crumb and his various identities. Kevin has a total of 24 personalities, including the Beast. In Split, we saw eight of those identities on display, either in person or via the video recordings on Kevin's computer. 
But while Glass showed us many more personalities, James McAvoy has confirmed that although he filmed 23 of Kevin's identities, only 20 of them made the final cut of the film. I've compared the list of characters that McAvoy's credited for in Glass against the full list of Kevin's identities revealed on his computer in Split, and it looks like the missing characters in Glass are Bernice, Raquel and Ansel, as well as Orwell, who we did see a clip of in Split. Shyamalan has said that because he was originally going to include 23 out of Kevin's 24 identities in Glass, at one point he was going to do a contest to tell him which character is not in the movie. Anyway, I'm hoping that on the Blu-ray we get to see an extended scene of Dr. Staple meeting Kevin's multiple identities, which shows us the remaining personalities not seen in either of the movies. There's also an interesting little moment with David in the group therapy session that ended up being scrapped. So you're not going to shake my hand and let me walk out of here. He's talking here to Dr. Staple and had this clip been in the final film, it would have been a chilling bit of foreshadowing of how towards the end of the movie, Dr. Staple holds David's hand and watches on while he's drowned in a puddle by one of the secret society's henchmen. I wonder if the ultimate decision to scrap this brief clip was partly because Shyamalan felt it tipped its hat a little too early to the fact that David Dunn would find out something sinister about Dr. Staple by touching her hand. The finale of Glass has proved divisive among fans, but Samuel L. Jackson has revealed that initially the movie had a different ending. In an interview with Digital Spy, he explained that the original ending was changed because of the way society is and what's going on in the world and what it would have looked like. Jackson's comments are rather vague, but one possibility is that originally the Black Clover secret society suppressing superpowered individuals was meant to be a covert agency of the government, rather than a group whose affiliations are never clearly stated. When Dr. Staple's henchmen arrive, they're dressed and labelled like regular law enforcement officials or SWAT teams. Given that Glass is set in the present, if the twist was going to be that it was the government that was secretly repressing and assassinating supers, then it might have felt the movie was trying to make a deliberate political point. Another possibility is that the final twist was changed as it ended the movie on an even darker note, which was also the reason that Shyamalan changed the original ending of his previous movie, Split. Of course, the three main characters are killed off in Glass, but what if after Elijah's mother, Joseph and Casey released the footage to the world, it ended up being dismissed as fake news by the government or the media? During the final scene, we hear Mr. Glass say, whoever these people are who don't want us to know the truth, today they lose. But I wonder if an earlier draft saw the government discrediting the footage and covering up the whole affair. I don't know if Shyamalan had anything like that in mind, but it would have been a pretty depressing ending, and again, given the movie a more overtly political ending. Apparently, also at a Q&A for Glass, Shyamalan talked about how the distributors Disney and Universal offered him a larger budget to make a more climactic ending. It's possible that their idea was to actually have that big showdown at the Osaka Tower. Shyamalan turned down the offer, however, as he says he's not as comfortable making films with huge budgets and feels he works better with smaller ones, so he kept this film down to 20 million overall, and its CGI budget was only $800,000, a tiny amount for a superhero movie. Either way, if you want to know more about the actual ending in the movie, and who the Black Clover Secret Society really represent, then tap here to watch my Ending Explained video, or check the link in the video description below. Now if you could have had any ending to Glass, what would you have liked? And do you wish any of these other deleted scenes had been in the movie? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this and it's your first time here, then I've got loads more deleted scenes breakdowns, plus every week I upload new videos, so why not subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Tap left for everything you missed in the ending to Glass, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!